I had a little bit of a an IT crash then. Let me get this pointer back up again. Move that. We'll close this down, get that out the way. Nearly there. Here we go. All right, giddy up. G'day, Brian. All right, so here we go. So uh, first of all, uh, welcome everyone and congratulations on your decision to attend this webinar. I know for most of you, it is, um, of course, a Thursday night. Uh, there's probably some good TV programs on TV at the moment, on television or on your cable that you'd like to be watching, but you've decided to attend here. So because you've committed to your time, I promise to give you the best I can give in today's session. Now we will be covering a lot of information and look, I'll try to get through it all, but if not, we might even have a second session because when I started to plan this session, it went from NLP, it went to the power of questions, and we ended up roping a whole lot of other things into it as well, which I think are absolutely essential because one thing we've come to learn is that when it comes to trading, is that five, they actually say that 5% of successful trading is about having the right money management, your risk management. 5% is the trading strategies that you're actually trading, but a massive 90% really comes down to the mindset, the trader's mindset, the psychology of that trader. And going by, we had over 200 people uh, book, and there were still bookings as I clicked on this, people booking in today, into today's webinar. And so what it really shows me is that the mindset is on everyone's mind. How do we actually master ourselves? Because when we master our mindset, we master our trading. Now, I will put a little disclaimer up here. I'm not a certified NLP practitioner. However, I've been a student of NLP for over 38 years. Uh, I attended back in the early 1980s a webinar, or sorry, not a webinar, or a live seminar with John Grindler, one of the founders. And it really started from there. I was amazed by the technology and what NLP can do. Now, I do need to pull up a disclaimer because we are going to quickly pull up in a moment the potential of trading, and you'll see why that is. So as we all know that we all know there is a risk in trading, don't trade with the rent money. Uh, and before you go live, make sure you master your trading on the simulator. And a very quick 30 second, adver second advertisement. If you don't have my ebook, because we've got a lot of non-members here, uh, oh, no worries, Joe. Uh, if you haven't already downloaded The Truth About Day Trading, one of my free ebooks, please click on the description below if you're watching the recording. Even better still, become a member. For $197, you get what is the most comprehensive day trading and swing trading program there is that I know of. I've been doing this a long time. And it's and I think if the members were here, if I was to read out their comments you pro, that I'll probably get in a moment, uh, you wouldn't even probably believe it. Uh, plus, besides my program, you also get eight live, and they're recorded if you can't attend, so 16 hours of private group coaching. Every week I run, uh, besides my live trading room, three nights a week, but I also run uh, a coaching room. So $197, you get a massive amount of resources, live coaching, uh, dozens of videos, PowerPoints, I could go on and on, but I don't want to turn today's session into an advertisement. There it is, we're finished. Now, for the handouts and resources, uh, on my Google Drive traders, there are a number in the members area. There is a new folder there, which I have not put today's resources into yet. I will do it later on today. Mastering your mind with NLP. Don't forget the folder called Four Strategies for Mastering Your Mind. And we'll quickly look at a couple of things in there in a moment. That's where I had a professional hypnotherapist and um, uh, what else was he? I've forgotten. Um, uh, yeah, hypnotherapist, and he was doing some. I'm sorry, I've had, hired a number of people to do a number of professional recordings for my members on Mastering Your Mind. There's also a great folder with a ton of NLP resources in there called Creating Lasting Change. There's a folder there on trading psychology. Don't forget the Mark 
Douglas videos on the site. And I've also got a pile of MP3 soundtracks that you can download for your hour of power. Now, if you're not a member uh, of the Day Traders Fast Track program, traders, please drop me an email after the session as we, uh, we're putting together a little um, downloadable file where a lot of the handouts I refer to uh, will be able to email out to you. So please feel welcome to email me directly, trader at imadaytrader.com for the handouts that I refer to today. Now on my Google Drive traders, uh, so NLP, you'll find them in this folder, how to create lasting change, four strategies for um, uh, mastering change. And so just, and if you're a new member, take your time and go through every folder. There are literally thousands of handouts and indicators, etc., etc., on my site. Now, as we get underway, it's very important I state this. And my existing members here hear me say this every week. The sign of an intelligent person is how open they are to new ideas. And a lot of the concepts that I speak about may be foreign or new to you. But you know what? They work as long as you're open-minded. And it reminds you of the great book called Mindset. And there are two types of mindset. You've either got those with a fixed mindset, they uh, never want to be wrong. And quite often, unfortunately, the more mature we become, and can I use the word older we become, uh, because of the media and the messages we get, and we, we don't want to be proven wrong by our kids and by those around us, we develop what we call a fixed mindset. To, to really grow, we need to have that growth mindset. Uh, what can I learn from this? How can I use this? How will it improve what I'm already doing? What's great about this? These are all intelligent, compelling questions. And so it's so important that you be teachable because if you think you know everything, you'll never learn anything. Now, it doesn't mean you don't verify an idea, but virtually every one of the concepts that we talk about today, you'll find a ton of stuff on Google, you'll find it uh, on YouTube, on NLP, on empowering questions, etc. But I think you'll find I'll put just about everything together with a pile of handouts for you. Now, when it comes to trading, one of the greatest challenges that we have, and we'll briefly look at some of the challenges that we have is our mindset, of course. What do the markets mean to you? Is the, are the markets an ATM where I can go each day? Uh, John Yee, I know what you're about to say, keep it to yourself, <laughs> one of our successful traders. Uh, is it an ATM? Uh, is it exciting and fun or is it something to be terrified of? Now, until you develop the skill set, there's nothing wrong with being cautious about trading, of course. I'm talking about here becoming not only confident, becoming competent when it comes to trading. But our mindset in how we approach this is so important. I'm going to actually turn that off because it'll keep coming up. Now, to follow through and to really, to really, um, what's the word for it? Capture, to really master our trading, we've got to master our mind traders. And human beings absolutely follow through on who they believe they are. Now, your standards up to now, your beliefs up to now, and your habits truly do control your life. And a lot of these standards, our beliefs and our habits, we've developed from the past. The people we've worked to, those that love us, our parents. And as Wayne Dyer would say that, uh, even a lot of the habits and the things in our life are actually viruses. He calls them, or he used to, he's passed unfortunately now, but he used to call them viruses of the mind, such as trading is difficult. Everyone loses money. Um, how come I always fail at this? A lot of these things are standards and beliefs. And a lot of the things that we have traders, not only in trading, but in our life in general, are what we call habits. We've got to really start to control our habits, such as the habit of thinking as we trade. Now, there are dozens of reasons why a trader may fail. Moving a stop loss, not having a stop loss. Fear, as we know, the acronym is false expectations appearing real. Not having a trading plan. Trading is a business. And I know most of you have heard this over and over again. And I've got to quickly tell this story. And for my season members, you know this story. 
there, there was there's a, a story, and it's probably true, about a minister in a church. Uh, he would he would give a sermon one Sunday, and it was a great sermon, and it was about change and about reflecting on your personal life. The next week, he gave exactly the same sermon. The third week, he gave the exact same sermon and the elders in the church started turning around and looking at each other saying is our minister losing it what's his problem the fourth week he goes and tells the gives the exact same sermon and finally after the service the elders went up to the minister and said could we please have a moment of your time and he said certainly and they crowded around him they said um minister um we really appreciate the job and the, the message that you deliver here each week. However, you've given the same sermon the last four weeks. And he said, oh, I'm glad you noticed. And I'll keep giving the same sermon until you start to make change. And when it comes to trading, we tend to continue to make the same mistakes on a daily basis. And a lot of the things that we're going to be covering today, of course, are common sense, but we're not implementing them. We're not, for a whole lot of reasons, following the advice. So I'm not going to go through all of these because I think we know them. And a couple of handouts I got for you are about sitting down and evaluating where you are as a trader, because if you don't measure it, you can't improve it. Now, you can reinvent yourself. You can actually reinvent your whole life. You know, human beings are the only species on this earth where we can live one way for 20 years. We can wake up one day and said, stuff that, I'm not going to live that way anymore. And we can change direction. We are not trees. We can move. We can do something about that. So we can alter our ego. We can upgrade our thinking reboot our attitude and reconfigure our life. Our personality, your personality, isn't set in stone. However, there is some work behind it. And as we know, the only place in the world where success comes before work is in the dictionary. Now, one of the techniques that we're going to be talking about today, of course, is NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming. Now, NLP, is all about your behavior, your thinking process, and the words that you use and how you say those words. Now, I actually received, and I'm not sure whether the members logged in just before a member uh, sent me an email, he was looking for the link, and he said, uh, I'm really interested to see how NLP relates to trading because I've used NLP or I was taught how to use NLP in selling. Because where we can use NLP in lots of areas of our life is through modeling, is through matching and mirroring. It's also about creating permanent and lasting change. It is a real science. Now, if you're not familiar with NLP, it was actually put together uh, in the early 1970s by Richard Bandler, who was uh, who was an information scientist, Dr. Richard Bandler. By the way, we've always, everyone's debated, is he really a doctor? We don't know, <laughs> but he's put doctor um, before his name now. He's a very, very smart man and a linguist professor called John Grindler. Now, people describe Richard Bandler uh, as what they call an unmade bed. He's matured a lot over the years and he's getting on a little bit. Very, very interesting gentleman. And um, John Grindler. And John Grindler was actually sent by the US government uh, over into a, um, a country, and I can't remember, I think it was into the Amazon, where this new tribe had been discovered. And he was sent in there to communicate with them. And within two weeks, the tribal elder the chief had actually uh, asked John to marry his daughter. John got along so well with them and managed to match and mirror their mannerisms, their tonality, how they spoke, etc. And that just shows the power of matching and mirroring. So there's a ton of stories I could tell around that. So, you know, NLP is really described, as I say here, as software for the brain. 
Now with NLP, I'm not sure if I actually say it down here. Um, look, there's a ton of stuff on Google and YouTube about NLP and there, there's now um, practitioner courses all around the world. I would have probably here around 20 odd books on NLP and Tony Robbins, he started off, I think it was, uh, he was doing a course with John Grindler in the early eighties. Uh, and that's how Tony Robbins got his foot in the door and most of his work is based around um, uh, NLP. And what they actually did, a couple of amazing things they did, and uh, maybe I've got a slide later on it, I can't remember, but they studied um, Milton Erickson. Milton Erickson uh, passed away, I think it was back in the early 80s now, but he was the world's most renowned uh, hypnotherapist. And he was also uh, uh, in a wheelchair. He'd suffered an injury or an illness when he was a child. And so what they did, they discovered that Milton had the ability of hypnotizing anyone within two or three minutes. You could shake Milton's hand and somehow he'd be in his wheelchair, he, he would shake your hand and within a minute or two you were hypnotized. There's even a story where once he was treating a carpenter and Milton needed to have some bookshelves built. And he was treating the carpenter under hypnotherapy as he was building uh, bookshelves for him. There's many, many stories. They also studied Virginia Satir. She was the world's greatest um, family therapist. And what they were looking at, what made them so special? And they found out there was a language and, and a whole series of things they would do. And that's really what NLP is about. So we're going to look at how we can use this science and some of the techniques along with the language and the words that we use in how to improve our trading, how to take our thought process and our trading to the next level. So by mastering our mind, our thinking process, our habits, the words that we use and the questions that we ask, we can master our trading. That will enable us to then master a financial future. So what's the plan to do that? First of all, traders, we've got to approach this with the zeal of a crusader. You've got to burn the boats. There's no turning back. In other words, if you truly want to master uh, the art of day trading or any form of, day, uh, of trading, you've got to burn the boats. You cannot be, and I, I hope this is not offensive to anyone, you can't be half pregnant. If you say, oh, I'll give it a go, you may as well spend your money on a great holiday. You've got to become a student of the markets, a student of what we're doing. Remember, we're trading against some of the smartest minds in the business, against people that have been trading all their lives. But the great news is it's not a game of intellect. Just about anyone can master the art if they're truly committed. But it means about become, but you've got to become what we call committed. So some of the things that we're going to be talking about today and covering is number one, create, creating a compelling future. And I actually quoted this in one of our sessions yesterday that, um, and, I, and I'm certainly no scholar when it comes to the scriptures of the Bible, but in there, I think it's the King James Version where it says, uh, where, the, where there is no vision, uh, the people will perish. We've got to have a compelling future. And um, some of you uh, know the story at the moment, we've got, um, I've got, we've got a very large home where I live in, uh, in Australia and we've got a psychiatrist staying here for six months. He's actually working, we're asked if we put him up, uh, he's very, he's from England and originally Pakistan by the way, very, very interesting gentleman. And he's treating patients at a local hospital for six months uh, because of COVID, huge call on psychological services. And it's just really interesting talking to him about those that are really suffering in life who've had some great conversations. And quite often we find that we talk about people that there, there is nothing compelling in their life. They're really the sum of their life is the people that they live with or they hang around with. And it really is true. You've got to have that compelling future, that exciting future, something to look forward to. And I always think back to a marriage. 
And remember when you first dated, I don't know if you've been through a divorce. I've, I've uh, on my third marriage, I've been on my third marriage now for 20 odd years, and this is it. I've now, I've now got what I call a life sentence. Okay, I'm very happily married. It took me a long time to grow up. But the point here is that in a lot of marriages, when we first meet someone or, or in a partnership with someone, uh, it's all very exciting. And we really get along really well and things are going great. But what actually then happens is we, we fall into a rut. And by the way, do you know what a rut is? A rut, of course, on the side of a road is that, that ditch. A rut really is nothing more than a grave with the ends kicked out. Let me say that again. A rut is nothing more than a grave with the ends kicked out. So many of us fall into a rut. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to know how to dig myself out of a rut. I'm out of it. So if you don't have a compelling future, if you're in a marriage, for an example, if there's nothing exciting happening, we tend to get sick of our partner and we think the grass is greener on the other side. So everything in life, it's got to be compelling. We're also going to be talking very quickly about self-evaluation. Where are you now as a trader? Now, I, I, it's just so important, traders, that some of the exercises that I give you on the handouts, please do it. Because if you don't do it, if you don't measure it, you can't improve it. And so it means you've actually got put, you've got to put pen to paper on a couple of things. The hour of power, and we talk about this in our sessions all the time, every day you've got to spend some time on giving yourself a check up from the neck up because we all suffer from a hardening of the attitudes. It's so important that you work on the psychological side of your life, where you are mentally on a daily basis. Play the CDs as you drive around or put it on, like us now, we've got UBS ports in the car. You know, so it's so important that we be working on ourselves, using things like creative visualization, the I am, we'll get to in a moment, lofty questions, our affirmations, um, hypnotherapy is great, meditation for traders. And on that point, uh, on YouTube, there are some great videos or soundtracks you can now download on meditation uh, for traders. I've got a number of things that I've bought over the years on meditation. Then, of course, we're going to be talking about NLP. So very quickly, let's talk about creating a compelling future. What is your mighty why? When the why is big enough, the how will appear. Let me say that again. When the why is big enough, the how will appear. Now, what does a profitable day trading career mean to you? It means financial freedom. It means choices for life. That's what it means. And as I say continually to, to traders, you can do this if you're committed. And when your why is big enough, the how will appear. And Robin Sharma, as he says here, to achieve the impossible, you first have to develop the mindset that it is probable. Now, the question, and I don't want to turn this into a big rah-rah session. This is not what today is about. Today is about taking your trading to the next level. It's about drawing a line in the sand where you are now and going to that level of profitability. Now, one of the things you need to be, really, to have very clear in your life, what would it mean to you if you were to earn that extra 1000 a week, 2000 a week, or 10000 a week? Until you start to believe that it may be probable, you're not going to get anywhere near it. You may be saying, well, look, I don't have the skill, the skill set right now. But when we talk about modeling, that is, if two or more people can do it, it can be modeled. You can do the same thing, but we'll come back to that. But let's just look at and I know my season members here, by the way, uh, for anyone new here, hasn't attend, really is not a member. <laughs> One of it is, I'm just seeing whether John is in the room, uh, John Hull. Uh, is he there? Uh, just quickly looking up. No, uh, John Hull's not there. Uh, a number of years ago, he, I'd say about the, the old established members. And he said, hang on, mate, you know, stop calling old established. We're seasoned members. <laughs> okay. So for my seasoned members, those that have been with me for quite a few years, you see this regularly, of course. But for newer members or for those that haven't done this yet, this is all part about creating a plan of action. 
So, so if you're trading either the ES or CL with a $4,000 account, number one, we never ever risk any more than 2% of our capital. That's at the most. And as you build your account, we drop that. So if you're going to net two, uh, 100 a day, now that's basically on CL, that's two six tick trades a day or uh, two five tick trades a day. Uh, for members, that's your two Bs. That's $100 a day, only $100 a day. By doubling your capital, that is every time you get another 4,000 in your account, you start trading two, two contracts. You get another 4,000 in your account, you start trading three. So taking a very conservative, realistic, intelligent approach using the market's money you have the potential of earning 10,000 a week in only 30 weeks. Now, what would that mean to you financially? This is two scalps a day. That's it. Let's perhaps just stretch it a little more. Let's say you go, whoops, and I did, did I stuff that up there? Sorry, here it is here, sorry. If we go for 150, so we're after three. Uh, oh, great. It's good to have you here, London. Welcome, mate. I was going to email him and say, where have you been? It's great to have you here. Thank you. Uh, so what if we went for 150 days? So we're after basically three scalps a day, three 2Bs or 34Bs, 80% plus trades they are. 150, you're up there within 18 weeks and just one more. What if you got there with 200 a day? That is, you're committed to day trading three to four hours a day, uh, but still being very conservative, you're up there within 12 weeks. This can be a life changer. Now, this is the why. What would it now mean to you in your life? Now, for those starting with a smaller account, of course, we can start off with $1,500 and go for 50 a day trading the micro uh, uh, ES or the MNQ or the Russell Micro, I mean, uh, you may even start with Forex. It really doesn't matter. But by compounding sensibly, doubling your money, you can see the potential. But if you don't have a vision or a, or a dream or a goal, you're like a ship without a rudder. You must set a target. Now, as a reminder for members, remember in the membership area, You've got the calculators that will allow you to plan your own journey. And not only that, but Raymond, uh, one of our long-term members, he even put together a great calculator a few years ago for us on how many trades would I then need to undertake each day uh, with the tick value, the commission that we pay, etc., and we can play around with our win-loss ratios. How many trades a day do we then need to undertake? And so you can truly sit down and create your own trading plan. Now, some of the strategies that we'll implement or you can implement are, and these ones have already been recorded for you by, it's actually a hypnotherapist that record us, is the lofty questions, which we'll look at very quickly. There's no need for it to spend a lot of time on it. The trader affirmations, the hypnotherapy sessions, and of course, NLP. Now you'll find in the folder of four strategies for mastering your mind, all of these professional recorded sessions I had done for you. And there's also a couple of great ones there by um, Paul McKenna, who's a great UK based hypnotherapist. So we've already got a lot of these things here for you. Now, what we've got to also be aware of as I share a lot of these techniques as we now start to drill down, it's called confused knowledge. It's a bit like when you start trading, you want to focus on one rules-based strategy and start from there and build from there. Once you master one, you then add another strategy. You master that, you might then say, maybe add another one. You may not, you may just be happy with a couple of high probability strategies. And particularly if you're a new trader or really seeking out, it sometimes it can be confusing or challenging. So with the techniques I'm going to cover with you, find maybe one that initially resonates with you and work on that to begin with. For some of you, like my seasoned members, you can probably get your NLP, your lofty questions and a few things underway. But the more serious you are, the more time you need to put into it. 
So let's just start here with the power of questions. Now, when we change our words, change our questions, we change our life. And that is a lot of the questions, everything we do in life is predicated, is really based around questions. Is the red light, uh, is the, the, are the lights red, are they green? You know, it, just so many things. And let me just pull up a document here for you. Now, where is it? Um, let's go for, no, let me just, I might just have to find where it is. Now, I was looking at it just before now. You might just have to persevere with me as I find some of these things. Lofty questions. What are my daily? Dear me, what I might have to do, maybe it's a Word document. Look, let's just start. Oh, here we go. Empowering questions. Okay. So, first of all, as we trade, it's so important that we reframe, uh, and a reframe is when we look at something and we change the meaning. And I'll give you a good little diagram in a moment for that. But it's important that we ask ourselves what we call empowering questions. For an example, as we trade, if we have a losing trade, we're going to ask ourselves, we're going to change what we'd say, damn it, I stuff that up again. Why do I bloody well do that all the time? You know, um, uh, why does this always happen to me? Now, your brain traders is the world's greatest computer. The question you ask is the answer you get. Why does this always happen to me? You know what your brain says back to you? Because you're a turkey. That's why it always happens. We need to be asking ourselves intelligent questions such as, what's not perfect yet? Now, traders, what's a presupposition as we trade, if we have a losing trade, but we say to ourselves, what's not perfect about this yet? Well, we can make it perfect. We can do better. It's an intelligent, empowering question. How can I improve? my entry? How can I improve my exit? What will I do differently next time? What do I need to learn or do so this won't happen again? Now, when we're asking these questions and we ask the same thing around our winning trades, what did I learn from this trade? Uh, how can I replicate my winning trade? How can I improve my next trade, even if it's a winner? These, All of these and asking these sorts of questions are all habits, habitual habits that we need to develop. But unfortunately, as we develop through life, or maybe you've blown a number of counts, etc., uh, we stop doing this or we don't do it at all. And a lot of this can be that virus of the mind, the things from our past, our work, our colleagues, etc. And as it says up here, your brain's like a genie. Be careful what you ask for. So one of the major steps is to what we call reframe the meaning to everything. This is an NLP technique. We call it reframing. It simply means asking an intelligent, empowering question, reframing what that has meant. You know what? I can learn from that losing trade. I learn something, trade, I'm serious here. I learn something new every day. And most of you have seen my trading journals. I've got dozens of them where I take notes as I trade, etc. And I learn something every, I truly do. I really do about myself and about my trading. So it's so important that you be asking the right questions. Now, there's some other questions that we want to be asking ourselves, which we'll look at in a moment. But one of the things here is when it comes to questions, it's what we call black box thinking. And there's a great book actually called Black Box Thinking. And it really relates back to the airline industry, the black box. If there is an airline disaster or perhaps a failure of some sort, they go straight to the black box and they'll play it back, which will give them a readout of all of the electronics and what was being said in the cabin at the time, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, all with the goal of improving the airline industry. And of course, look where we are today. We're miles ahead. Okay, it's, it's, as they say, um, and I once heard of an airline um, pilot that actually said, well, no, it might have been a stewardess. She turned around and said, we've arrived at our destination. This was the safest part of your journey. Please be cautious on the roads. So basically, it's safer to be in a plane than driving on the roads. But it's all about what can I learn from this and perhaps do it differently next time. 
Now, one of the things here that we've got to watch is our self talk. And there's so many articles now about this. And it's so important that we learn how to minimize negative thinking. And it's significantly, oh, let me get that word out right, more impactful for us than trying to be positive. That is, we've got to stop ourselves from, oh, shivers, here I go again. I stuff that up. We've got to reframe that. What can I learn from that? What am I going to do differently? Let me write this down. All of this is a reframe. Now, when we say something out, this is now scientifically proven. When you say something out loud, traders, it has 10 times more powerful power than when we think about that. So if we say to ourselves, oh, gee, I stuffed that up, if we say it mentally, but if you say it out loud, it's 10 times more impactful. Likewise, if it's negative, it's 40 to 70 times more powerful. So it's really about minimizing your negative thinking. Now, I can already say and see some of you rolling up your noses now, putting your arms across your chest. I can see you. I can see you uh, thinking, oh, this is old stuff. I've heard this. But you know what that is? Once again, this is our thinking. And perhaps I should have said this at the start of our webinar today. If you can pick up just one major idea, one thing that may change your trading career, one of these big things is our negative thinking. Now, when it comes to words that we use and thinking, what are the two most powerful words uh, we can use in the English language? What are they? They're very simple and they're called I am. I am. And let me see now if I can find the handout. And here we go. Where is it? I think it's going to come up there. Maybe I've got so many uh, things here. Now, this is a handout there. So what are the two most powerful words in the English language? The two most powerful words are I am. Because what comes after I am will shape your life. I am powerful. I am strong. I am successful. I am an achiever. I am a winner. I am a champion. Now, this works if you say it with passion and you really mean it. Like it's no good sitting back traders. And this is one of the things with modeling and saying, oh, yeah, look, I'll give what Ray says a go. All right, I am rich, but I'm bloody not rich. You know, maybe one day. No, actually, no way can I ever get rich. Their belief systems. OK, I am rich. I am determined because once again, you're dealing with the mind. I am grateful. I am a miracle. Hey, I am connected. I am more than I, but I am powerful. I am loving. I am caring. When we start to say these things, it changes your life. But you need to be open minded to the possibility of this. Now, thoughts are powerful. And as we know, thoughts lead to actions. Actions over time become habits. And the habits lead us to long lasting results. So what I want to encourage you to do with these handouts, for an example, like this one, is to print them out, highlight them. And some of the documents we're going to see in a moment are in Word. And they're in Word so that you can actually tailor them to suit your needs as a trader. So I am, the words that we use there are massive. The next one, of course, are affirmations. Now, affirmations have been around for years. And, you know, I am patient, disciplined, and a focused day trader. I'm a fearless day trader. These are affirmations. Now, I've actually got affirmations uh, that I've had professionally recorded for members. And there's four recorded sessions. Some, I think, if I remember correctly, have got sound in the background. Some don't have any sound there. So I've had um, uh, different ones recorded for members there. In total, there's 54 minutes there. But it really comes down to utilizing and actually using your affirmations. Now, the sad part is a lot of traders, once again, won't do it. Now, an affirmation also is very much known now as an incantation. Now, 
if we really study affirmations and some interpret them, a series of words said as a magic spell or charm. Okay, that's you can chant them, you can use different words, etc. For an example, I am patient, disciplined, epic master, day trader. I wait for the best of the best. For those that are members here, you know, five by five, yes I can. Three by eight, yes I can. Five by five, yes I can. So what that is for those that aren't members here, or maybe you're a new member, five by five, that particular one relates back to CL, where my goal, it's dropping now because financially I don't need all that much money now, but five by five, Got to be careful, Alice. That sounds a bit egotistical. It wasn't meant to be, by the way. But five by five means five five tick trades a day on CL is 200 a con. It's actually 250, less your commissions. And three by eight, that's, and by the way, the five by fives are your 34 Bs for members and your scalps. Three by eight is your uh, two Bs, your larger moves. That gives you over 400 a day per contract. Now, what we've got to do is when we trade, how do we want to be trading? We want to be in a peak mental state. Five by five, yes I can. Three by eight, yes I can. This gets us in the right mental state. Uh, one of our members even sent this in. <laughs> um, we'll rock you by queen to this using the incantation, using the affirmations, etc. Now, if you are on my trading floor and we were having our 7 a.m. meetings, do you know what we'd be doing? Some of you unfortunately might say it's corny, but for those that know how this works, we would be doing this every single day as we kicked off our trading day. Now, it's not talking, we're not talking about here being overconfident or reckless. Competence is still important, but it's so important that we approach our trading with the right mindset and we be in a peak mental state. The next thing here is creative visualization. Now I've got some great handouts here on visualization and how you can uh, apply that. So rather than go through it in detail, which we could spend half an hour to an hour, I've got some great documents there on visualization techniques. In fact, um, Paul, one of our members has written a great book uh, uh, it's only a small one, but on visualization. And so Jim Carrey, uh, the story is early in his career, actually wrote out a check and carried it around in his wallet for $10 million for acting services. And uh, what was that one? And I think he got it for, there's one where he put the mask on his face. Was it called The Mask? I think that was a movie that he actually got, the first movie where he got $10 million paid to him up front for that movie. And he visualized it and whether or not you're open minded to it. And actually, I know you are because that's why you're here. Visualization, uh, these techniques work and applying these. And we're going to be applying that in a moment when we talk about Brilliant Squared, uh, an NLP technique. We're going to need to visualize a couple of things that we need to do. Uh, uh, yeah, I think Brian just said he, he undersold himself. Now he makes 20 million a movie. That's right, Brian. Back then, that was when he first got going. Now, the next thing is hypnotherapy. And I spoke about uh, Milton Erickson before, and we've ha I've hired a, a hypnotherapist to do a number of recordings for our members. And, and for those that aren't members here, um, I work very, very long hours with trading, with coaching and running the live room. And so I have, and I, I'm loath to say it, but I need to say it because my kids and my grandkids call it this way. I have a grandpa nap every afternoon for an hour. Okay, so those that are wonder how I put, well, I prefer to call it a Winston Churchill nap because I know that Winston Churchill would lay down for 20 minutes to an hour every afternoon. So I'll lay down usually for about an hour and I say to uh, Kylie and my wife, hon, I'm going for the grandpa nap. <laughs> um, and that's where I'll have, I'll lay down and I'll put on uh, my, uh, I've got some great Bose headsets, um, uh, sound headsets and I'll put them on and I'll listen to every single day. Not always the same one, of course, but I've got a lot of different uh, CDs with different tracks on it, etc. And I find it works brilliantly for me. So if you like, I'm putting my downtime into good use. Hypnotherapy, 
meditation, all of this is all great for this. So for members, you've got access in the hypnotherapy one there. There's a whole lot of different things there, but there's also some there by Paul McKenna, for an example, the one we've got uploaded and, and for non-members, you can find it on YouTube. Paul McKenna's got some good stuff there um, on self-confidence. Once again, you've got to have the competence in how to trade, but it helps if your mindset is right. And hypnotherapy is one of the techniques that we use there. Now, meditation is another very, very important one. Now, I've only just started, by the way, watching um, uh, the TV series called Billionaire. I don't know if any of you will see it. Over in Australia, it's on a, a channel called Stan. I'm not sure whether it's Stan in America, but uh, is it Billions? I think it's called Billions. And uh, Bobby Axelrod <laughs> is a lead character. And I noticed there, even though it's in the series, he'll sit down and do his daily meditation every day. And by the way, for those that I was hoping in today's session, we could talk about the alter ego concept. But we're going to run out of time to talk about that today. But Bobby Axelrod, if you just use the good parts of who Bobby is, um, uh, he would be a great, I think, if you need to become more aggressive, more tougher towards your trading, uh, uh, he'd be a great, I believe, a great alter ego to be using. So, uh, yes. So anyway, meditation for traders, something that I'd really recommend you start to do. Now, just to very quickly talk about developing habits. Habits are something that we need to work on. And as, um, uh, who was it that said, um, and I just, dear me, I've got a mind blank, but a famous philosopher once said, uh, a habit can't be thrown out the window. You've got to coax, a bad habit can't be thrown out the window. You've got to coax it down the stairs one step at a time. And it's true when it comes to habits, traders, we've got to work on it. Everything in life, whether we go to the gym, what we do around our trading, how we treat our loved ones, our thinking patterns, virtually the way we have a shower, the way we brush our teeth, all of them, and the, we usually do it exactly the same way it's a habit. We need to work on those. Now, the University of London, in a study, I think it was around 10 years ago, found it takes between, I think they said 21 days and 120 odd days uh, to create a habit or develop the right habit. The average was actually 66. Uh, Joe, <laughs> yes, you will, mate. Uh, Joe just said he can't keep up. You will have access to it, mate. And so if you want to... Um, uh, and everyone that's registered, we, we're going to be sending out a link to the recording. <laughs> that's good, Joe, I'm impressed, well done. You can't keep up with the note taking. So um, I've got, uh, and once again, I, I talked to you about becoming a student of the market. And, and look, because I work for myself, and most of you know I've got a massive library here, you know, I've got hundreds of books. And by the way, I'm not saying this to impress you. I'm saying, I'm just trying to impress upon you that I love learning, okay? And I've got so many books on the power of habit, etc. cetera. Um, and so um, the power of habit is a great one. Um, you've got, uh, and that's by Charles Doug. And uh, what's the other one I've got over there? Um, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Now, just while I think of it, try to write this down jamesclear.com. Now, if you go to jamesclear.com, uh, you'll be able to get his free newsletter that comes out every week, where he has a, uh, Thoughts of the Week, and gee, there's some great one-liners. But not only that, he has a ton of free resources on developing habits, on mindset, etc. So go to his website. Even better still, buy his books, Atomic Habits. Habits. There's some great things in there, such as improving your life just at 1% a day, what it means to you at the end of the year. It's massive. You're going to be 3,000. The compound effect comes in. So we have what we call the habit loops. So we've got to really develop the habit of thinking right. Now, how do we remove bad habits? Well, for an example, I have a little handout here for you, and it's called the rubber band technique. Now, when we have a bad habit, um, and, and it can be 
such as biting our nails. We can, and I don't bite my nails, but we'll be talking about a swish technique you can use for that. Uh, you might have a certain thinking habit, but one of the easy techniques is to put around your wrist a loose fitting elastic band, a thick one. And every time you have that negative thought, you go to nibble on your nails or whatever your habit may be that you need to really get over. Um, uh, you pull that elastic band back and you flick it so it stings. And one of these techniques and a lot in the swish pattern and the reframing techniques, consider this for a moment. Um, back in the old days, going back 10 years ago, 15, actually 20 years ago, I said, imagine you take a record and you get a coin and you scratch across the record. Well, now we say a CD, pretty, pretty soon they're going to be out. But you take a CD and you scratch it. What you're actually then doing is it's called a pattern interrupt. interrupt, interrupt. You're interrupting the pattern or the habit loop, loop. So by stinging yourself, but of course we'll get to the swish pattern, you can do the same thing with that. And so we've got to break that loop that we have and the, the rubber band technique can be a really good way of doing that. So let's now talk about NLP and some of the things with NLP and I've got some other handouts towards the end that I've gone past that will bring up and we might go back and quickly revisit some of these things we've spoken about. Now, first of all, we've, we've briefly spoken about Richard Bandler and John Grindler um, and, and putting together this science. And it's continually advancing. Now for those, uh, I mentioned Tony Robbins. So most of Tony Robbins' work, whether you love or hate him, what he teaches, a lot of it is based on um, the science of NLP and the science of verbal and nonverbal communication. Uh, if you ever go, if you've ever been to one of Tony's webinars, you'll see there's lots of music, lots of people jumping in the air, using their physiology. It's called getting them into a peak state. And it works, provided you don't have the bad habit of negative thinking, if you're open-minded to the possibility. But let's have a look here at one of the techniques that we can be using called the swish pattern. This is a technique that's been around for many, many years. And one of the original techniques that was put together when it comes to NLP. Now in the handout I've got for you, there's a link, and I know my season members have seen this, see this every month, but there's a link to a video that Tony recorded back in the early eighties. And I use that because when you watch it, don't be put off by it because he's a very, very young man when he, when he does it. But it's just a great example of using the swish. Now, what I've done, uh, and you'll notice, by the way, his audience, when he does the swish pattern with them, they are sitting down. I don't want you to sit down when you practice or put in place the swish pattern technique. I want you to stand when you do it. Now, also, what I've done, that exact transcript and he's talking about biting his nails and he gives on, on the YouTube video, you'll see some other examples. What I've done, I've transcribed, had my staff transcribe the script and I've converted it to you as a trader. Okay, so a picture of a person you're really committed. Um, uh, now I want you to make a second picture, a picture of the epic world-class day trader you wish to become. So I want you traders, to watch his video a number of times. And then based upon, I want you to watch it at least 10 times because you've got to get the whoosh or the swish. And I, <laughs> here I am, I have a big standing desk. So I'm standing here, traders, um, with a headset on, using and waving my, my hands around um, just here. And actually I should just turn the camera on just for, for one moment. Uh, trader, let me just quickly turn the camera on. Just quickly get this up. Is the camera on? Yeah, here we go. Here we go. So first of all, welcome everyone uh, to this session. And I think I've knocked uh, that down. Let me just get that back down a little bit. Oh, you can't quite see part of my library. But anyway, uh, so welcome. Uh, so the swish pattern, uh, it's best if you're standing. And as you'll see, you have the swish. <clears throat> um, 
Oh, what you're going to do, you're going to go smashing through a picture. Whoops. By the way, I did that recently and I gave myself a blood nose. I truly did doing the session. All right, so the swish pattern, I want you to get up and practice the swish pattern. But traders, what I want you to do is watch his video a number of times and get the idea. Apply yourself a passion because it works. Now, if you approach it with, I'll give it a go and see if it's any good, forget it. You're wasting your time, like on a lot of the techniques. Um, oh, looking, oh, thanks, Mark. Yes, I thought I'd grow a, grow a beard. <laughs> it's been some time. Um, so uh, it's very, very important you apply all of these techniques with passion. It's like with learning. If, if you're looking at mastering day trading and you approach it from an approach of, this is frustrating, it's bloody hard, I'm never going to learn this, do you know what? It's true. Now, when you reach a period of frustration, I want you to reframe that to a, to a, and reframe it to what we call fascination. Isn't this fascinating? I still haven't mastered this. Don't get frustrated, get fascinated. Now, that is a classic reframe technique, and it works. So anyway, you've seen me. So the big thing you hear is to use it. Now, um, we're not on the, we're going to get to the brilliant squared technique in a moment, but likewise with the brilliance technique, make sure you can still see me as I'm here. The brilliance squared technique is where we have a square in front of us, okay? And we're gonna visualize the person we wish to be. We're gonna see them with the physiology, their tonality. And when we get to the technique, I've got the script of what you do, and then we're going to step into that person. And then we're going to use a technique where we actually will not only step in, but we will integrate that person. But we've got to feel it, we've got to really commit ourselves to it. But like a piano, with a piano traders, when, it, when you first get a brand new piano delivered, um, you, the guy will come around and he'll tune it. He'll come back a couple of weeks later, he'll retune it. But then every year you've got to retune it. Likewise, with a lot of these techniques, it's not something you apply once. You've got to do it on a regular basis. You've got to get that record scratch. You've got to develop those new habits. So um, as I mentioned, I've got a standing desk, which I know many of my members do. And the advantage of when we trade with our standing desk, and I've got all the screens here, is that it allows us to, with an NLP technique to use our physiology. We can stand, we can have our shoulders back, etc. For an example, if you are depressed or feeling down, how does a depressed person or someone else, you may never get depressed, what's that depressed person look like? Usually they're slumped, they've got shallow breathing. What's one of the best techniques you can get somebody if they're depressed or feeling down? You want to change their physiology by movement, by getting them to move, by going to the gym, by going for a good brisk walk. These are all things that we need to do to have what we call a state change. I'll turn it off now so we get back to full screen. I'm not focused on me, but maybe focused on what I have to say. So uh, what we've got here is the swish pattern for day traders where you see yourself having that impact because you want to be congruent. It's no good saying, okay, it'd be great to earn a million dollars, but what are you going to do with that? Where are you going to go? What, what's your dream board show you? Um, uh, all of these things make a massive difference. So this is one of them, and we call it the swish pattern. Now, when you go through the handouts, you'll find that I've got a number of handouts here on the swish pattern. This is the one specifically for day traders. But there's some others there, and I think I've got it here, uh, on like nail biting, things that you could do. Um, identifying visual submodalities, and there's directions on that. What exactly does that mean? And some of them were actually put together for practitioners of NLP to use with their members. So what I'd like you to do is to approach this seriously as a science and almost really medicine because this can help you overcome a lot of the major issues that we're having. Now, while we're here, and because we're talking about NLP, let me just briefly go through with you some of the NLP techniques that we can be using. And I have got this handout for you as well. Now, first of all, 
Um, most of you know, I really, I look at um, uh, my trading as being a sniper, one shot, one kill. And standing back, waiting for that trade. And it's damn frustrating, <laughs> for an example, when we're, in the, when we're in our trading room and it's we've got virtually no good, it's just a terrible market and we're sitting there for two hours by the just saying that for some of the members that are here. But the bo bottom line is I visualize, visualize myself as that sniper. But what we want to learn, and that's a visualization comes down to an NLP technique as well. For swish pattern, what are some of the top techniques that we can use. Number one is the swish. It's you've got to do it physically. You've got to see the um, the, the old you, sorry, the new you smashing through the old you. Watch the video. It's going to be the best way to describe it. It is very powerful, but you've got to do it at least 10 times and then do it daily two or three times and then maybe get it down to doing it once a month. It works. The next one is reframing the experience. What do things mean to us? And I've got to actually, let me bring this up. Have I, where is it? This is very important on this one. Where did I, did I have it here? Maybe it was back. Let me just quickly find this. Don't tell me I didn't put it in. I thought I did put it here. Sorry, everyone, this is, well, I think it's worth the wait. Maybe I did mention it. I, don't, I think I put I put it in a, <clears throat> excuse me. I didn't put it in, I don't believe it. Anyway, it's really about leaving our past behind. Oh, here it is, here, sorry. This is a reframe, here it is. So don't let the shadow of the past hold your future hostage. Now. I come across traders every day, members and non-members, and I've got over 12,000 members now. And a lot of them have lost money over the years, and some of them a substantial amount of money. So how do we handle that? We've got to what we call reframe the past, because if not, we're carrying it around on our shoulders. Okay, and as the young man says, wouldn't it be easier if you left that behind? So how can we reframe it intelligently? Well, one of the reframes we can use is to turn around and say to ourselves, okay, I've had a very expensive education up to now. Up to now, I've had some great learning experiences. Notice I didn't say shitty learning experiences or bad experiences. Yes, they may not have been pleasant, but let's reframe it. They were learning experiences. From today onwards, I'm drawing a line in the sand here on in. Because until you leave your past behind, you're not going to move forward. Now, it's a mistake not to learn from your past, but we've got to learn from it to move forward. It is so important, traders. It'll make a massive difference to our trading. So getting back to our NLP here, where were we? Okay, so we've spoken about that one. So that was um, leaving that behind. Okay, so let's talk about modeling for a moment. <clears throat> now, modeling is not new. Uh, modeling is about, is this really? If one person can do something, uh, anyone can learn to do it. Well, actually, I'd prefer to say if, and I, did I put it on the next slide? Maybe I didn't. And actually, I changed it because it's not quite true. If one person can do something, it may be a fluke, or they just could have some special skill that really um, I'd have no chance at all of modeling. But if two people can do something, just about anyone can learn to do it. For an example, if we've got a trader <clears throat> that's a, a successful day trader, and there are thousands of them, yes, there are even more traders that never make it and never will. However, if they were, learned, were able to learn how to model, match and mirror what we call the syntax of what they're doing, you can model them. Now, what exactly is modeling, okay, or actually I meant to say syntax. The word syntax means the order of things. In trading, we'd put it down, what's the exact checklist that a master trader would be using? What's their exact mindset 
at the time. And so we can match and model excellence. Now, this is one of the very big things of NLP, because what they were to do is with Milton Erickson, they were to model exactly what Milton would do. Uh, Virginia Satir. Now, Virginia Satir had the, um, uh, the skill set where she was a famous family therapist. Uh, she would have, say, uh, a mum and dad come in with a rebellious son or daughter. Now, I have seven children traders. I've, most of my kids have just been dreams, but I've had a couple of them were a little challenging there for a few years. Anyone know what I mean? I think you probably do. But what she could do, she could have someone in one session go in with our challenge and they would walk out where the, where the son or daughter wasn't even looking at them, arms crossed, and they'd walk out cuddling each other. She was able to elicit various strategies and able to have them go back to great experiences. So there's a lot of things that we can do by modeling. And so if you look at this here, imagine if you want the best shot on the shooting range. You can practice for years and years to master the skill, but with NLP, you can model what an excellent shooter does, how, what they visualize, the self-talk they use, how they feel, exactly um, like you'd even be, you'd be looking at the, 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 the tiniest things they do. For an example, when do they breathe? They might breathe out just as they're about to take the shot. All of this is called the syntax. You want the exact same syntax. We can do the exact same thing when it comes to mastering trading. Now, this is where we want to find great traders and we can use strategies such as Brilliant Squared and a whole lot of things like that. You want to find those that you feel you resonate with. For example, with the alter ego. Uh, you go and look at, um, you may uh, look at uh, YouTube, find a trader, you see some YouTube videos and say, wow, I really resonate with him. I love his style. Maybe not all of his behaviors, but I like his way of thinking. And what you can then do is create an alter ego around that person, the way they dress, uh, you'd watch the way they move, etc. These are all modeling techniques and they can make a massive difference to your trading. And so you wanna be able to model that, very important. Now I've already mentioned the swish pattern there, which is all about developing the self-confidence, the patience, the focus. Uh, you might apply it when it comes to your fitness, what, how you see yourself, overcoming, of course, uh, overcoming fear and trading. So that you can use these techniques and these technologies for many different things. Now, let me talk about anchoring. Now, for many, many years, when I was doing leadership training, I would be on the stage and I actually got involved in the training industry. Um, most, what most people don't know, um, uh, I used to actually promote through a firm, Tony Robbins. Uh, for some of the members here, I've probably never told you that many, many years ago. Uh, Jim Rowan, uh, many famous, um, uh, many, many famous speakers. This is going back many years ago. And by the way, I invested in a company that actually and I bought into that company, very expensive mistake. Let me say that, it was not financially good. It really wasn't. But that's another story for another time. But um, how did that come up? I think I'm just thinking about this in anchoring. But with anchoring traders, um, we can actually anchor our success by every time we have a winning trade. Yes, yes, yes. Not only saying it with passion, but pumping our fist. For an example, when I'd go on stage, I might be introducing a speaker. For an example, Jack Welsh. Many of you um, uh, that were in leadership would know Jack. He used to be the CEO, the president of GE. I had the pleasure of introducing him a number of times on, a, on tours. And unfortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago now. But whenever I went on stage, I would have a thing where I'd had anchored to my little finger I would pull my little finger and it would change my state. For an example, if ever you watch Tony Robbins behind the scenes, before he goes on stage, he's behind the curtains. Do you know what he's doing? He jumps up and down. He gets himself into a peak state. Now, what 
he's done and what I did with my finger, you can do it by pressing your palm, you can anchor a feeling. Now, to give you an idea of anchoring, um, and some of you have heard this story from me before, but let's just say, unfortunately, someone passes away, it might be your dad, and at the funeral, um, everyone's coming over to you and they're on your shoulder, they come up and squeeze your shoulder and say, look, sorry about the loss, it's going to be okay, um, you know, your dad was a good man, I'm sorry. Five or six people come over at the funeral and they tap you on the shoulder or cuddle you or whatever. And what they're actually doing inadvertently, quite often, they're anchoring that feeling. Now, six months later, you go to a party and you're feeling really good and you're at this party, things are really buzzing, you know, feeling really good. And someone comes over, how are you, Jack? And they, they squeeze your shoulder. And all of a sudden, you feel deflated. You feel down. What was that? They triggered the anchor. For an example, you can have an anchor when it comes to music. How many of us can think and go back 40? Now, maybe I'm showing my maturity here, but if I went back 50 years ago, <laughs> okay, when I was 12 or 13, actually, I'd have to go back a bit, a bit less than that, but um, I'm nearly 52, by the way, uh, 62, by the way. Um, if I went back there, but if I hear a song on, on the radio, I can virtually go back to that time. Now, most everyone has that experience where you go back, you remember exactly, oh, I remember when I first, I was on that date or had that experience, you know, you can remember that. That is an anchor. Now, what we can actually do is anchor experiences and get in a peak state, <clears throat> such as, yes, 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 or five by five, yes, I can, five by five, yes, I can. This is anchoring. Now, traders, I know some of you are probably thinking, Ray, you had me up to now, this is pretty corny shit, mate. But you know what, traders, it works. Who gives a stuff what your neighbours think when they see you jumping around your, your study? <laughs> okay, it doesn't really matter. My neighbours think I'm crazy anyway. But traders, seriously, you've got to get yourself anchored to these sorts of things. And that's why when you go to the best seminars, you have, people are moving. They remember the experiences and it's so important that you do the same. Now, We've got a ton of handout shit we want to get to. So a lot of things we haven't got to, we'll keep going. So first of all, you can get this book readily on the internet um, uh, and it's a free one there. You can, it's his complete book. It's freely available there. Members, you'll find this in the NLP folder on my Google Drive along with a ton of other NLP books. This is ridiculous. And this is where Richard Bandler says, in the introduction of a book, one of his strategies is we've got to turn around to say, this is ridiculous. Enough is enough. I'm not going to put up with my behavior. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. Whether it be a bad habit or whatever, but you once again, you draw a line in the sand and you start to do something about it. And this is where Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins, a lot of those are great books. However, you've got to be open-minded to the possibility of them. So let's go through some of the handouts that I've got for you and we'll talk about some of these in particular. The first one here, and there's not a lot I need to say, I'd recommend you print all of these out, five steps to make affirmations work for you. The wise open mind. And for example, with those, you know, what are you negative anyway? I'm not going to read these out because you can read this as step by step instructions and they work. However, you need to develop the habit of putting them in place. Now, most of you know, I have a typed up, I've got a set of things I do every day. I've got to answer emails, live trading, I've got to do, there's a ton of things. And so what I've got, I've got what I call my massive daily plan of action and I have it dated, and I've got um, a whole lot of projects here that are listed A rated down to B and C's. The A's are the things that I have to do every day. Now, some of the things for you would be initially is developing the habit of reading your affirmations every day and saying them out loud and saying them with passion. That would be a number one thing or an A priority for you to do. So make sure you study that one. There's another technique here on 
the swish. So let's just say if you say, well, look, uh, the swish sounds great, Ray. I want to use it for other parts in my life besides trading. So this is a great breakdown of applying the swish uh, to a whole lot of other um, techniques and things like that, a whole lot of other things you may want to do. Now, with this, uh, once again, on the on, on YouTube, there are a ton of videos on doing the swish. Um, look, some are not as good as others, but, but if you just model that one by Tony, don't be put off by his age, okay? Look at what you've got there. Well, look, look at the benefits of what he's got there. You know, he gets the message over really well. So there's the swish. Now, four steps for creating visualization. I'm actually, don't ask me to pronounce the lady's name, but I've actually just got a couple of days ago CDs on uh, her visualization. She's got a lovely voice, okay? Um, so he had just done visualization and it's something just seen, and this is where having a dream board in front of us. Now, in creating a dream board, I'm very fortunate um, where my family has been brought up on this stuff, my kids, whatever. So I'm able to have all of my dreams and goals and pictures and plans, things we're doing in my office here. And I don't care whether someone comes in, uh, if I'm do, training a new trader or whatever. Um, but be very careful traders, what I'm trying to say here, who you share your dreams and goals with. As I, as I always say, beware of the, of the thief on the street that wants to steal your wallet or purse, but be even more careful of the person that wants to steal your dreams. Always stand guard to the door to your mind. And unfortunately, sometimes it's those closest to us that steal our dreams. Now, sometimes it may be well-deserved. Maybe we've stuffed up a number of times in the past and they're concerned about us uh, and they're worried it's gonna happen again. It may be your wife, it may be you've lost the home, you've got a new one and she's worried again, or, or he may be worried you're gonna blow it again. So keep your goals to yourself initially and earn that trust back, but you've gotta visualize yourself achieving these things. The visual squash. I love this one. <laughs> this is a great NLP technique and it's, we're going to get the power, the, the square technique, and this is where we doubly are uh, putting two actions in place and I'll explain this fully in a moment, just in case you think, what's he talking about? <laughs> I'll explain it correctly in a moment. But the visual squash technique, I initially um, read about this uh, way many, many years ago. In fact, I've got the book in front of me here. It was actually published back in 79. And it was a book that was um, a transcript of a live webinar that um, Richard Bandler and John Grindler did, did together. By the way, they no longer speak. They only just settled uh, a legal case a, a year ago on who owns the name Neurolinguistic Programming. They agreed to jointly own it, but that's another story. But anyway, in the book, Frogs into Princesses, there's a story there of um, where they had this lady. Remember, this is going back quite back to 1977, I think the webinar was. The book came out so a long time ago. And they describe how they had, and this is word for word in the book, a woman that was a homosexual. And <laughs> this is what they say, this is word for word. And she, she'd met a man and she wanted to actually start to date him but she was so scared of no longer being a homosexual but she wanted to move on from being that and so they spoke about using the visual squash and with that what you're doing here is you're going to integrate the new you into your body and the technique is you have the person in front of you or who you wish to become you see them you feel them you, you stand the way you're breathing the way they're doing there's a process that we go through then you put your arms around and you clasp your two hands together actually can i just perhaps i'll just turn the camera on again for this it might be more effective okay so what we do we'd see in front of us who we wish to become the person we wish to integrate, maybe a famous trader, could be a skill set you wish to uh, develop. We're gonna clasp our hands like that. We're gonna see that person. We're gonna use the brilliant squared technique, which we're going to look at in a moment. 
I'm going to then step into the square or it can be a circle I'm going to take that in for brewing square technique in a moment but then I'm going to use the visual squash and I'm going to integrate the person and pull them in now what they say in the book was this lady in the in the course had seen how effective it was she refused to pull it in so Richard um, uh, and John grabbed her hands and they forced it into her. That's how they describe it um, in the book. So it's really, really interesting. Now, some of you may think, well, does this really work? Hell yeah, it really does. So there's some, uh, a really, it's, it's, it's not a whole lot to it. And on this, if you can afford it, if you can find maybe a great NLP tech practitioner, once again, I'm not a practitioner. I've just been doing it. Sometimes I think I might know a little more than some of them, but it's something I'd recommend traders that you maybe even consider seeing a really good NLP practitioner and go there with what's your outcomes, what you wish to achieve. So let's talk about this brilliant squared strategy. And you can do this with, and there's been a number of, and there is a number of variations of this. But this is where, um, think of a situation where you'd like to feel and act brilliantly. Whichever it may be, choose three different states. Imagine yourself standing a square in front of you, fill with the favorite color. Anyway, you can see all of the instructions are here. See what you'd see, hear what you feel. Step out of a square and think of something else. Step back in. Now, all of this, it works. It's brilliant, as long as you're open-minded to the possibility of it working. So this is what you call brilliant squared, but that's where then you can then use the visual squash technique at the same time. And what you're then doing is stacking on top of each other a number of this, these techniques and reinforcing them. The next one here is from Get, <clears throat> excuse me, Get the Life You Want by Richard Bandler. How to feel wonderful, changing bad feelings, uh, the, the belief change system. Uh, now, I'm not going to go through all of these because we could spend an, an hour just on each one. Changing bad memories, but there's a whole lot of different applications of these techniques that you can apply, traders. So invest the time in going through these. And once again, if you're serious about becoming a serious day trader as a profession for that income of the one to 10 to 20,000 a week, you're gonna to have to invest the time to do this. You've gotta get your head, your head right. Now, another thing here that Tony Robbins would say, and really a founding NLP rule really is, how do we go from where we are now to where we want to be for most of us and for most people it means raising your standard now raising your standard is what have you accepted in your life up till now uh, there's so many examples i can give where our standards like the amount of study we put in maybe it's not going to the gym but we need to raise our standards our beliefs and this is a great document I've got here for you on self-discipline, mindset, beliefs, etc. on raising your standards. So as the finally here, as the final line says, success is a result of daily actions, our daily habits. And if we want to get to where we want to go as traders, we've got to raise our standards. Now, the rubber band technique, I've already briefly mention that to you there's some great instructions about that and it's really quite simple when we have that negative thought or catch yourself eating stand whatever it may be we're going to flick ourselves okay we're going to inflict some pain so go and study that in detail there's some really good stuff there uh, the next one here is and uh, this is a great ebook and better still go and buy the main book but just here un unleash the warrior within Develop the focus, discipline, confidence, and courage you need to achieve unlimited goals. As you've probably guessed, I'm a fairly goal-orientated person. And um, I love, as much as I don't want to go and deal, do SEAL training, okay, but the Navy SEAL training, but we can learn a lot from these people. And I do find some of this stuff inspirational. If that's not for you, 
find something that is inspirational. Take notes, tab them. Um, uh, you know, what can you learn from these? And it, it makes a difference, you know, it really does. But you know what, not only in your trading, but in your life, and I'm sorry, I, and I know my members hear this all the time. So I've got a 17 year old daughter, she goes to university. Uh, this year to study occupational therapy and psychology and uh, her name's Kiara and she's she's if ever you could have a dream child she's been it okay she's just been she's a wonderful young woman anyway is any if anyone here has read the books or the series of books conversations with God so anyway she comes into my library here and she's always rating my books and um, I went and, and said goodnight to her the other night and she was propped up in bed reading conversations with God and, and she's got all these tabs in the book. And that's what we should be doing um, uh, with our books here is most of you, I won't turn the camera on again and show you, but I, I've got tabs through nearly all my books so I can go back and do a quick review. Now, that works for me. Maybe there's some accounts you wish to do. This here is a fantastic NLP technique of modeling. So choose your success model. So this is about imagining, floating back in, repeating the technique. This is great step-by-step -step instructions on what to do with NLP modeling. For you, you're gonna be modeling. Uh, okay, so Joe, um, opinion on uh, EFT or tapping technique for trading. You know what, I've heard of it, Joe, but this is one technology I haven't explored. But who did I have over recently? Oh, it was, no, it was Kumar, the, the uh, psychiatrist that's living with us. He was telling me about it, uh, EFT, because I use that in psychiatry as well, EFT for tapping. Uh, but I'm not all that familiar with that. Do you know what? Whatever works, whatever works and gets the, as long as it's not damaging to you, but whatever works. But EFT, I know there's a lot of people get great results with that as well. So with this technique, print it out, and it's really simple what to do. Find a trader, or maybe it's something else in your, in your life. Imagine them performing. You don't even have to know them. Imagine you're watching and listening to them. Uh, trade, for an example. Play a, a move in your mind of their, what they're doing. Develop it. Then you can actually go and you can match and mirror this person. So it's a great technique. The next one on lofty questions. Now, I've actually got, a, I think I've got a shorter one. No, there is a shorter version of this, but here I give a longer version on lofty questions and what they mean. So I'm not gonna go through all of these. However, this is extremely powerful. And I actually got this technique uh, from a website called Mind Valley. Mind Valley run um, particularly online webinars all around the world, particularly on um, uh, personal growth, uh, mind control, I say mind control, <laughs> growth, and a whole lot of things like that. And so this is uh, just to say where I got the concept from was from one of their presenters. Now, why am I such a great day trader? Now, I want you to think about that question or why do I have such a great future or why do I have so much strength when it comes to pulling the, the trigger? You're asking an intelligent, compelling question of the brain and you're not giving it too many choices. Why? Oh, well, because I'm smart and because I put my work into it. Why do I have such a great future? What's the presupposition of that question? <laughs> You've got a great future. So, I really want to, uh, I recommend you print this out. So um, I've got, um, in my office, by the way, I've lined it with pin boards um, and special panels you can buy down under here in Australia from Bunnings Warehouse, by the way. They're, they're panels and so they're screwed. So all of these. So I've got my lofty questions like, why is my life so amazing? Why is day trading so easy for me? Why am I such a super trader? Um, and why am I so lucky in life? Well, I give love to my kids and my wife. And what, so you've got to think, this is not an affirmation. This is a question you want to ask and you want to answer it. Why am I always so relaxed? Now, 
traders, I'm not always relaxed, but I relax when I read it out and I think, well, I'm thinking about it now. I am relaxed. Okay, so these are things that you've got to put time into it. But I'll tell you what, lofty questions is a great concept and it works brilliantly. Uh, document here on the power of words and questions. And we've been pretty much talking about that. You know, um, uh, you know, I think I might have been in the room yesterday. I said, if somebody says to you, oh, um, you know, that's just that's just too expensive. Well, really, you should be coming back. No, the fact is you just can't afford it. All right. That's a reframe. Oh, that car's expensive. No, well, it's not really. It's a beautiful Mercedes Benz. The fact is you just can't afford it. Now, you're not going to really say that, but the power of words and questions. So I want you to read that. You know, the brain does not know the difference between reality and what you visually imagine. Okay, and so uh, very quickly, a quick story going back many years ago, the Volvo 760 just come out and um, uh, I went to the dealership. Uh, I was living in Adelaide, Australia at the time. Gee, it's 30 odd years ago now. And I went to uh, a Volvo dealership, had a look at it, and I really wanted this this Volvo. Uh, dark, dark, um, uh, dark gray with red leather interior. Well, I thought at the time it was cool. I bought one within a month, but that month before I went to get it, I could smell the richness of the leather. When I took it for test drive a month before, I could feel it on the road, had a beautiful stereo, that rich leather, the seats were heated. Uh, and when I picked it up a month later, after a week or so, I was quite disappointed. I'd already been mentally driving it for a month. Okay, that's what visualization can do. So finally, as we just go through now, just a couple of these here. Now I'm going to quickly go through our handouts. We'll be another 10 minutes and then we'll wrap up. So we've spoken about anchoring, but we've got the technique of stepping into my future. That is where you can either use a brilliant square, you can use a square or a circle where I'm standing back, looking at the trader who I wish to be, or maybe I might be modeling or thinking of all the attributes of traders that I know that I wish to become. <clears throat> and I'm seeing them, I'm feeling them, and I'm stepping into that circle and I'm integrating those feelings. Now, another one here is, is leaving my past behind. Now, you can do that a number of ways. Is that, um, for example, we can surround ourselves with plexiglass, which I'll talk about, talk about in a moment, but putting everything behind us and looking ahead. And some of the things we can do here is, for an example, is turning the brightness down. If you've got a bad thought that keeps coming up, and unfortunately, good, uh, bad things happen to good people, unfortunately. And sometimes we replay them time and time again. What I want you to do is, and usually when we do replay them, they're usually in full color. We can usually hear the sounds at the time, etc. We need to change them into, for an example, into black and white. And this is where we can do the movie re rewind technique. Now, that's too long to explain here. And you can read a lot about it, look up on the YouTube on that. But that's where you're sitting in a movie theater. You'll see the experience up on the big screen. Then you basically hop out of your body and you get up there into the projection booth. You can see your body sitting there in the, in the seat in the movie theater watching the experience. But what you then do is you start to run it backwards and forwards. You play da 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 circus, circus music. You run it backwards, you run it forwards. You then all of a sudden having um, people in the movie, yourself and others talking in a Mickey Mouse voice. You, you do all sorts of radical things like that. What you're doing is scratching the record. Now, for those that are saying, Oh, not another one of the, you know what, it is amazing what it will do with those suffering from trauma or bad experiences, etc. But you've got to do it with an open mind that yes, it will work. Likewise, you can turn the brightness up on an experience, you can make it larger. The visual squash, we've already spoken about that, where you see um, a sniper, for an example, a sniper, or it might be a Navy SEAL sniper, tough, strong-minded, patient, disciplined. 
you can see that person, you can step into the circle and you can pull them into your body. Uh, that's pretty much 11, but then you've got plexiglass. And I want you to think about this. Say if someone that in life it really gets under your skin, maybe it's the words or what they're caustic or what they say to you. I want you to mentally visualize that you're surrounded by plexiglass. And whenever they speak to you, plexiglass is bulletproof and it bounces off. So with their caustic words or whatever, if you see them bouncing off, okay? Um, and it made me just think of one of the techniques for public speakers, of course. When you're up there, if you're suffering severe um, uh, um, anxiety, when you're up there, you imagine your audience sitting there with no pants on or even naked, okay? So what you're actually doing is reframing and you're thinking all these people sitting there with no knickers on or, no, or totally naked. That's a reframe. So there's a ton of things that we can be doing to help us there. So perhaps you're starting to get an idea, traders, of the wide variety of things we can be doing. Now, a couple of things we must do, right? And first of all, is to really sit down and start to measure where we are. So it's so important that you take the time. Maybe you go, maybe, my, and, and you want to enjoy doing this. If anyone like, if you've got a favorite coffee shop you go to, maybe print these out and go to your coffee shop, order yourself a coffee um, uh, and sit down and think, look out the window. Where I live, uh, very close to the beach here, I've got a favorite spot, I'll go down, I've got a tub of stuff I'll take down there, I'll buy a coffee and I sit there and do some work. I love it. I can watch the, ra the waves roll in here. We've got some of the best beaches in the world here where I live. And so, you can sit down and enjoy the process. Who do I need to become to achieve all that I want? Well, I need to start doing this. What are my greatest challenges? Well, maybe, and I'm serious when I say it, maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's I'm addicted to porn. Now, I'm serious when I say that. It's, it is a major problem uh, around the world. And so, you know, but be honest with us, what are your greatest challenges to get to where you want to be? Okay, now what actions or steps will I put in place or undertake on a daily basis to get where I want to go? This is one of the handouts. Now the next one here is, um, let's start here. It's about doing who do I need to become to become one of the best traders? So who do I need to become? I need to become disciplined, patient. I need to develop competence. What actions? Once again, another way of looking at it. Uh, here, what are your daily non negotiables. That is, I've raised my standards. There are a certain amount of things today that I need to do on a daily basis. They're non-negotiable. That is, I must do them. My affirmations, my hour of power. Now, on the hour of power, that is where you might be. Um, and, and look, for some of you may say, well, Ray, I don't have a spare hour. I'm still working a job. Now, we all know what the word job means. J-O-B, just over broke, okay? But seriously, what's in your car? Do you have a CD player in your car? You can burn on your computer a soundtrack and you can be, you can turn your motor vehicle in to a mobile university. So driving to work and home and as you drive around, and most of you know the story of my kids, I've grown up on that, um, listening to good stuff. Once again, giving ourselves that regular checkup from the neck up. Now, I'll just show you this, and I've got to turn the camera on just to show you what I do. Now, my kids keep saying, Dad, you've got to get with it. But what I do, wherever I go, I carry a micro cassette recorder. Now, uh, and you can see it's, and I go probably go through about one a year. It's well worn, as you can see. I take this to bed. I really do. I take it when I walk the dog. I take it everywhere. It's here with, well, I don't have my car keys here, but it, it's everywhere I go. I take my micro cassette recorder. Now, you can do it on the phone, but on um, uh, uh, on Amazon, you can buy these for about $50. But within two clicks of a button, it's light, fits in my pocket. I can put down what I'm thinking. Now, how many times, traders, have you gone to bed thinking, I must do this tomorrow, I must do that, uh, or you're walking along or you're driving in your car, gee, this is, a, I must actually, could I scalp the T1s for three ticks on average? What's the percentage of winners? Works out it's 92%. Oh, geez. So, you know, but you may forget that thought later on. 
And so micro cassette recorder. Now here, my daily affirmations might be one, are uh, the hour of power listening to stuff. Once again, I'm, that's how I got onto that. If you're driving in your car, um, uh, reading your, your uh, maybe your trading plan, whatever it may be, and they're non-negotiable. For us middle-aged men and women, of course, it's working out at least five days a week. It doesn't have to be two hours, but 30 minutes getting our regular exercise. Um, and last of all, just on this one, I just want to talk about getting into state. Now, I've got on my wall here, I'm just looking, and we don't have the magazine down under. One I got um, in the States, it's, it's called Sniper Journal. And uh, I've got the cover here laminated on my wall here. Uh, and it's actually uh, the Sniper Journal inside the mindset of a former Tier 1 sniper. And down below it, I've got... Um, uh, typed up there, I focus on one good trade at a time. If I can do it once, I can do it again and again and again. Now, I can look at that and visualize and imagine uh, being in his shoes. Now, whatever makes you feel good. Now, in my coaching, for example, I'm always handing out posters like this. It might be traders sitting at desks here, uh, pilots. Now, you may think, well, what's a pilot got to do with, it's got everything to do with, because if you look at a pilot, and um, I think that was the one I had, I took of where they were in a two engine, jet engine plane, and one of them, one of the engines had caught fire. These guys are sitting there like, you know, we're about to go to a Sunday picnic, and I've just got a, an engine on fire. You know, they're going through their checklist, <laughs> and they're down to one engine, you know, and so just thinking, what can I learn from these people? How can I use that where they're cool, calm, and collected? And what we can do is we can actually create alter egos around these people. But then you might have others where they're, which I've got on my wall also, where it shows trading floors. And I've got all these traders around the trading floors. And I'm visualizing and imagining what these traders are actually thinking and doing. So traders, um, we've covered a great deal uh, in today's webinar. And some of the techniques I didn't physically, because I think um, you're better off reading about them and going through step by step. We could spend an hour just on every one. But the important thing here is, is to realize you can do this. You can master the art of day trading. You can do this. And it all starts with developing the mindset, the belief, developing the habits that you can do it, which means making a commitment of becoming a student of the market and mastering your mind. So traders, um, uh, uh, for members, I hope you got something out of this. For most of you, of course, we'll see you next week in coaching or in the live room. Uh, for those that um, uh, are not members, well, thank you for attending. And as I mentioned, you can actually uh, go to my website, imadaytrader.com. For $197, you get eight live sessions plus the hundreds of handouts. There's over 30 PowerPoints. There's hundreds of hours of recordings. Uh, don't feel overwhelmed by that. Start in my sessions, and we talk about focusing on the key setups to begin with. And yes, we will be uh, emailing out to everyone that registered a link uh, to it. And give me a couple of hours, traders, and I'll get the handouts uh, to the website. Oh, David, thank you very much for a compliment. I really appreciate this. So traders, uh, thank you very much. Everyone have a great weekend. And um, uh, for many of you, I'll see you next week. Thanks, traders. Cheers. Oh, uh, by the way, Brian, I love that one. What man can do, Anthony Hopkins, the edge. Yeah, I like, that's a great quote there. Thanks, mate. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks, Russell. Glad you enjoyed it. All right. Cheers, everyone.